Hello, everybody. My name is Beckwith, Paul Beckwith. And what I want to talk today about is the, some of the statistics of the extreme weather events that we're seeing around the planet. So as this peer-reviewed paper, which I'm going to show you, clearly demonstrates, we're getting more hot weather outbreaks and extremely hot weather outbreaks around the planet and fewer cold weather or extremely cold weather outbreaks. That's one thing. And another thing is that the precipitation regime has definitely shifted and we're getting more heavy rainfall events. And uh, the parameter that they look at in this paper is rainfall over 24 hours. And the number, the, the amount of precipitation over a 24 hour period has greatly increased over, over time. So we've seen a big shift in the statistics of the weather patterns on the planet. And that's what I'm going to talk about here. So fairly recent peer reviewed paper uh, shows those things. So first of all, let me show you a couple key images um, from the paper before I get to the paper. So this is a fractional area of the planet of hot daily temperatures. Um, it's res with respect to a baseline period of 1951 to 1980. That's 100% level, that the baseline. And you can see the years here, 60s, 80s, 2000s, 2020s. And what you can see here is the temperature greater than 30 degrees Celsius fractional area of the planet that has temperatures greater than 30 degrees Celsius. Um, and you can see that it rises. <coughs> it, it, it shows a significant rise, a slow rise. So there's more and more of those particular days. But more striking is the temperatures above 40 degrees Celsius, uh, which sh are shown in the red curve. So there's more fluctuation here. Um, it looked like it was lower here, so in the 670s, slight cooling that people have talked about. But look at the rise. You know, it's turned higher than the long-term average, the climatological average between 51 and 1980. And it's just shot up here. There is a lot of fluctuation, but it's reached, you know, the, this is 1,000, um, 1,500, almost 2,000. So huge increase in these really hot in the area of the planet that has these really hot temperature greater than 40 degrees celsius heat waves and if you take the ratio here you know it's about a, it's gone up a factor of 10 or 15 times since 1980 and if you look at the cold outbreaks temperatures less than 30 and temperatures less than minus sorry less than minus 30 and less than minus 40 you can see a decrease of those uh, to the present day, but it's a small decrease. Okay, so this is the temperatures, extremes on the planet. And this is an, a, a graph from the paper, which I'll show you in a minute, it's open source. You can look at the precipitation graph. So this is a fractional area of heavy 24 hour precipitation with respect to 1951 to 1980, the same climatological average. And you can see, you know, in the previous graph, we see the temperatures above 30 and above 40 degrees Celsius climb up. This is precipitation greater than 50 millimeters a day. This is about two inches per day of rainfall. That's the black line here uh, going up. So from the 100 line, it's going up to about 100 and 1.7 times or so, 170. And then even more intense rainfall days where the precipitation is greater than 90 millimeters a day, which is uh, 0.9, um, which, which is nine centimeters, or uh, it's over three inches, three and a half inches, three and three quarter inches, something like that. 
that much rainfall in a day has risen even faster, as high as double to 200, 210 relative to 100. That's two, 2.1 times more um, area on the earth that is ex experiencing these heavy, very heavy, heavy 24 hour precipitation rainfall events. And how is the statistics changing? I like this graphic here because there's some different ways that the statistics can change. So if, if, if this is the mean temperature, uh, we can have a shift in the seasonal um, minima temperatures and a, a rise in the seasonal maxima temperatures. The whole curve can shift over. It can maintain its shape, but it can just translate over. So we get more and more hot events, fewer and fewer cold events, um, both for the daily minima temperature and the daily maxima temperature. You can have a shift in the statistics of the curve by a scale shift in the distribution of the curve. So this type of curve, if this is the original with climate change, it can flatten out and it can extend further down into the tails on both the cold side and the warm side. Um, and that can happen so this is a scale shift in the seasonal minima, minima being on this side, this area of the curve is, is larger, like the shift is more to the left of the curve, left side, the low temperature side, less to the high, or you can have it more to the high and less to the low, so, so it shifts that way. You can also have just a shape shift, so instead of a Gaussian type distribution, if you get a shift in the seasonal minima, you have fewer cold events, more weren't like the, the shape of the curve can change um, and, and, and both for the minima and maxima. So this, so it's all here. Okay, so if the black line is the original and the dashed line is the shift with climate change, you can look at the area under the curve. If this is a cutoff for hot weather and this is a cutoff for extremely hot weather, the area under the curve corresponds to the number of events and you can see the number of extreme events goes way up, number of hot events goes way up. We get far less cold weather events or extremely cold weather events. That's just if there's just a shift of the mean of the temperature. You can also have an increased variability shift so that you still get a bell curve, Gaussian distribution, but it doesn't peak as high. The tails are longer. Now, if this if this shift is, if there's increased variability without a shift of the curve, you get more hot weather, more extreme weather, right? The areas increase. You also get more cold weather and more extremely cold weather if, if it's just a variability shift. You can also get a change symmetry. So if the dark line is the original without climate change and the dashed is with climate change and you get a change in the symmetry of the curve, what you can see here is you can see there'd be more hot weather events. There'd be more uh, extremely hot weather events. And in this case, uh, near constant cold weather and extremely cold weather. Okay, so those are the options. Those are the ways that the statistics and curves can shift. So let's actually look at the peer reviewed paper. Um, it's called Global Record Breaking Recurrence Rates or Current. The, you know, the, freak, the things that are recurring, occurring frequently over and over. There's record-breaking recurrence rates indicating more widespread and intense surface air temperature and precipitation extremes around the planet. So we talk about more extreme weather events, and this is a statistical study that is showing precisely that. Okay, so what they did is they analyzed the evolution of extreme annual surface air temperature and rainfall on the Earth based on the recurrence rate of record-breaking events. They found that the highest recurrence rates for record high annual temperatures um, in, was occurred in the tropics as opposed to the polar regions, which have the fastest warming. Both the recurrence rates and the global surface area fraction with daily mean surface air temperatures exceeding 30 degrees Celsius and 40 degrees Celsius provide further evidence for extremely hot years becoming more common 
and more widespread, affecting a much larger fraction of the Earth's surface, and therefore more and more people affected. They did a similar analysis for precipitation, and that showed some regions with more record high annual total precipitation and others with record low annual precipitation associated with drought. So they ran 306 runs with global climate models, multi-models, many models, part of the CMIP-6 SSPs, Shared Socioeconomic Pathways. So basically the latest state-of-the-art models and to get the statistics of record-breaking high temperatures. <coughs> right? So what we're seeing from these simulations and from the measurements is we've altered the geographical pattern for setting record in both annual precipitation and also um, in heat. So we're getting more and more extreme weather, more and more heat waves, more and more extreme weather events. That's what this paper is saying. And they talk about the 2023 being the warmest year on record. Um, there is, uh, we're getting profound effects of increased droughts, floods, and heat waves across vast regions of the world. Um, and this has been reported in the observations by Copernicus uh, data, satellite data, the Bulletin of the American Meteorological Society reports, recent massive reports and also the World Meteorological Organization, the WMO reports. So these studies on both heat waves, heat extremes and heat waves conclude that heat waves and extremely high surface air temperatures are becoming more severe and covering more of the Earth's surface. Um, they look at the recurrence rate of record-breaking events and they use the term zeta, the Greek uh, symbol small for, for small zeta. Um, so we're getting record-breaking changes in the statistics. But record-breaking statistics have not received much attention in the climate research community. So if you look for this term record-breaking, even using that term in the sixth assessment report, there's only 31 hits of, of where it's saying record-breaking from this massive report. And among these, only a few references refer to the probability of record-breaking 24-hour precipitation being greater than expected by chance. Okay, but this is happening. So, so they've, uh, th th this is, uh, you know, extremely important because it's just, uh, it's, it's not being discussed enough in the mainstream uh, climate reports and conferences, etc. So let's have a look at the uh, data that they've determined. So this is European reanalysis data. This is um, the so this is where records are being set um, on in annual temperature in these regions. And what what you're seeing is this is compared to the baseline from 1950 to 20. Well, the data is from 1950 to 2023. Okay, so what you're seeing is the changes between those dates, and we're seeing. Um, a lot more, the red areas are, we're seeing a lot more, like it's a ratio, so 200% will be twice as many of these heat events um, over that time period. So we're seeing the areas near the equator setting more and more of these records. And then there's a area, a band outside that, that's showing slightly lower um, records, number of records being set. And then again, high records as you go Go, go down. So this is the, the, the high records and then low records. We're seeing far fewer low records around most of the globe. Most of this is red, which means so 100 is uh, less than 100 is, is fewer of these uh, colder um, low record temperature events. And you can look. So I showed you this curve. Again, um, this is temperatures greater than 30 is this line here and temperatures greater than 40 is this line here. So we're seeing a lot more of these type of events from 1980 onward. And we're seeing a steady decline of the cooling extreme events where temperatures are less than minus 30 or less than minus 40. Okay, so I talked about that at the beginning. And then this is the, uh, this is the 
S T A S. They use a weird. The T A S is just surface air temperature. I always see this as S A T, surface air temperature S A T, but they call it T A S for some reason. And you can see this is the change in record high annual um, temperatures. So we're a lot. Most of the records and higher temperatures are being set in the tropics. Okay. Um, and uh, the, the, although the poles are changing much faster, overall, it's, they're not setting the records at the same rate, according to this data. Uh, okay, and then we get to the precipitation, and you can see this is the high records on annual precipitation. So this is annual now. It's not 24-hour period, but we're seeing more annual precipitation in, in the... Um, the, the, the blue is uh, higher, higher than 100%, so more precipitation in these regions, lots of in the southern hemisphere over the oceans, and uh, less in these areas, the, these uh, bands around, around the equator. So, so, so not the tropics, the subtropics. And then the low records, we're not seeing uh, low, lower records in too many places. There are some areas, uh, but, but actually, the green, sorry, the green regions mark wetter conditions. It says the brown regions are drier conditions. So lots of wetter conditions um, dominating. And again, you can see this. This is this is a 24 hour precipitation, though it's not the annual precipitation. So this is a fractional area of the earth. Um, the difference over the, you know, 100 is sort of this, this uh, the 100 is the average sort of baseline here. You know, we were at that around 100 up to about 1980 or so. And then we had this big shift in both the areas, the fraction of the earth with precipitation greater than 50 millimeters or about two inches a day over 24 peri hour period. And then the fraction over more, you know, more than uh, three. <coughs> Three inches would be uh, about 75 millimeters. Four inches would be about 100 millimeters. So, so about uh, 3.6 inches per day, the red line over that in a 24-hour period. We're seeing a lot more of those type of events. Again, as I discussed in the intro. So I just wanted to uh, bring this to your, your attention. Um, it's a peer-reviewed paper. It's open source. Um, and uh, the links are in the description. So thank you for listening. Um, we're getting more and more extreme weather events. We're getting more and more hot events and really hot events, fewer cold events or really cold events. And we're getting more and more regions where there's um, intense rain events. They didn't look at intense uh, drought events, but I'm sure the, the situation is the same uh, region. We're getting more and more extremes polarization it's all or nothing sort of with with rainfall so thanks for listening please consider going to my website paulbeckwith.net and donating to paypal to support my research and videos while the cop is going on for two weeks today was the second day and uh, my objective is to do um a video every single day while the duration of the cop is on, on and also I'll be talking about a lot of things that are happening there um, as we get more information from the negotiations etc so thank you for listening uh, and again please go to my website paulbeckwith.net and please donate to my PayPal to support my research and videos also I have patreon you can just search for me and if you go to any of the social media sites and just search for Paul Beckwith, you can find me active on those, posting a lot and so on. So please, uh, you know, uh, look for me next time you're on uh, some of these other social media pages. I am on True Social as well. I post stuff on there. Don't get too many comments back yet at the moment. But uh, anyway, thanks again for listening and bye for now.